I may disagree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. It's my pleasure to welcome Ken LaCourt to the show. Uh, he is the uh, founder of the newly launched Media Action Network. He was a senior executive at Fox News Channel um, from 1998 to 2016, so had a long career. Uh, and uh, he headed the editorial team at foxnews.com. And it's great to have him on the show today. We want to talk about what's going on with COVID. Ken, there's a lot going on, isn't there? <laughs> oh, that's a big question, isn't there? I, I have never in my life been in a situation where I could tell, if you tell me who you're going to vote for, I can tell you how you're going to stand on an anti-malarial drug. Yeah. And we've literally gotten to that point of America. And, it, and it's, it is so ridiculous how everything has become so absurdly partisan. It is just unbelievable. And you know what? I got to say, I, I think the left is going to lose this war because it's becoming so ridiculous. The the political correctness, the fact that you can't speak about anything anymore. This was the tolerant people. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Do you remember when we, when I was young, it was always the like the hardcore Christians in 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 Tennessee saying you can't dance, and if you say anything about evolution, we're going to kick you out of the school. Yeah. That's all gone, and it's and the completely flipped. The yeah. whole narrative is flipped. You know, it's, it's interesting. You know, we saw it first happening on the college campuses about seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and remember, and you'd have somebody go speak and they'd chain themselves to the door and blow whistles and do all that because they were called bullies. And now it's seeped into social media and it's seeped into politics, just it's, like it's, I've never it's, seen. It's, it's the crazy cancel culture. You know, this is, uh, this is, so, this is so Stalin-esque. <laughs> and Hitler-esque. <laughs> I mean, it's just absurd. Uh, well, welcome to 1984. COVID-1984. There you so, go. So, you know, it snuck up on us, though. I, I mean, we saw it coming. I mean, first they ban, uh, uh, who's the fat guy who's always screaming? Uh, Alec, Alec Jones, right? Oh, so Alec Jones, yeah. He was out there, and he says some stuff that you're like, that's interesting. And then he says some stuff that you're like, okay. You're kind of out of it. You're kind of Yeah, out I'm not believing that at all in any way, shape, or form. Right. So they, they killed him. And then they'd kill like, you know, true hardcore jihadis and Nazis. And then it was like, okay, well, we're getting rid of Milo Yiannopoulos because he joked that feminism is cancer. And now we're up to the point where literally a major news organization like Breitbart is live streaming a press conference by, by doctors who have the legal ability to inject people with medications in America. And they get frozen by big tech and, and, and locked out of their own site for having the you know the the temerity to actually actually broadcast that thing live, it, that I mean, is. I mean, the new censors situation. of speech are big technology companies. Totally. And uh, you know they they're all left leaning. There is there is not a one of them in the big tech world that leans to the right. No. So there doesn't seem to be any balance here at all. No, I, and I don't even know if they did that intentionally. I think it just burbled up. You know, I don't think that Mark Zuckerberg actually started his platform off to be a, a woke platform. I think at a certain point, he turns around, he's got 30,000 employees. Every one of them lives in the Bay Area, and they all are very, very at the edge of, 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 uh, of political thought, and, and he was stuck with that. And, and here we are. And it's, it's you know, it, it, it kind of, it, it reminds me of um, the, the movie title, uh, rebel without a cause, and I'm not saying the content of the movie, but that, that really seems to be like there's just a lot of people looking for a cause, and I don't even know if they know what their cause is. They're just they just want to protest something. Yeah, you know, clearly they can't articulate it all that well. I mean, besides free stuff, and that's yeah. a pretty consistent theme. Give me free, yeah, free, free, free things. Yeah. I'll, I'll take free stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think the rest of it really did come out of out of some of the recent just pushing in college campuses of everything that America has sucks, and mm -hmm. and it's this whole kind of kind of mantra that. Our founding fathers were terrible. Our current status is terrible. Healthcare is terrible. Anything that Donald Trump ever looked at is horrible and needs to be undone. And that's everything from police stations to, I mean, they're burning down Starbucks and Whole Foods. I mean, if you're burning down a Whole Foods. Those are, those are their kind of woke companies, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I don't know how much more woke you can get than Whole yeah. Foods. Right. Yeah, true, true. Well, um, uh, talk to us specifically about what's going on with the doctors 
and um, you know the, the censorship. And uh, if you want to share your screen or anything, feel free, uh, but um, uh, not not required. Just let us know what's happening now. So 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 look, I worked in in the media for. 20 years. I, I, I ran the foxnews.com. I was, uh, before that, I ran the, the West Coast operation for about a decade there. So I was there for almost, uh, almost, uh, almost 20 years. And I basically got to the point where I'm tired of bitching about the liberal media. And it's like, okay, how do we turn this around in, in you know, it, at, at all? And so that's why I'll show you a little bit of these things that I've that I've, I've set up and, and they're, they're literally like, I'm getting kind of somewhere between media and somewhere between activism. And here, let me pop up our latest. Eh. And, 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 you know, um, I have a, uh, a friend who's um, a big Ron Paul fan and worked on Ron Paul's campaign and so forth. Right. And, and, you know, Ron's been on the show before. Um, I'd, I'd say he's about one of the most honest politicians out there, or former politicians. And, um, you know, he th- he says that Fox News is a show for the left. Like, that's an interesting idea. But he gives me all these examples about it. And, you know, I think the fact that you're from Fox News and you worked there so long, people are instantly going to think, oh, gosh, you're this radical white right winger. No wonder Ken is saying all this stuff. Um, well, I mean, now I guess I am. I mean, you, you don't have to be you could be pretty centrist and you have to just be like, Hey, don't burn down that police station. And it seems like oh, you're, you're a radical, radical yeah. right winger. You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that and I'll jump into the, the other things a little bit. We would always get hit by, I mean, look, so libertarians, you know, they're, they're very ethically, how do I say they're ethically consistent people. And they actually, it's the only one of our major political philosophies that actually has a philosophy to it. You know, if you try to look at the democratic philosophy versus the Republican philosophy, it gets very mushy, where at least libertarianism, you know that it goes to an end. And, you know, and it's great right up until they tell you to start boiling your own water instead of having, you know, delivered by the city and, and, and whatnot. And, but every four years, they would be desperate to be on the, to have their candidate on, in the presidential debates. And so every four years, the, the, the email campaign started, you know, let Ron Paul get onto the debate, let Rand Paul. So a lot of, I think that their antipathy towards uh, Fox News and the others probably had uh, probably had a, a, a nexus in, uh, in, in, in the debates, because it's hard to say that Fox is liberal, but uh, well, I guess if you're, if you're Ron Paul, you, can, uh, you, can, yeah. you, you might be able to get to that. So now we do things like, look, we, the, what I'm doing right now is, 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 is we're in a sense saying, how do we change this? How do I die and only and not have the media be 90 10 stacked. I mean, look, conservatives have Fox News, a couple other news channels nobody's ever heard of and seen. We've got AM radio, and conservatives have, you know, a number of sites online, but now they don't have any of the backbone of that, you know, and, and, they're, and they're losing whether it's search or whether it's social media things. And I've been zapped because off because of the search results you see are controlled by left wing Google. And you know, some, you know the, yeah. uh, the the thing that uh, that uh, uh, that Breitbart actually recently let go, showing that it, you, you can look in their back dashboard and see how many people found them by the words Joe Biden. Right. And, they, you know, they'd have tens of thousands every day. They have a huge site and all this. And one day it dropped to zero when Google literally said, OK, for those keywords, yeah. They're not going to be a valid source source on this. So we'll do things like this, uh, the, you know, the Twitter and the censoring of doctors. We will do things uh, um, like like this is a terrific example of just the media ignoring a story. This was like a, a gadfly who lived in, uh, in Milwaukee. He's got the homemade Trump signs behind it. He gets shot to death right in front of that store right after he did an interview saying something good about Trump and everybody knew he was he was under fire. Literally not one word written about this in CNN, not one story written about this in MSNBC. So we do a little bit of goading. We do a little bit of... of and by the, uh, way, by the way, in case someone's listening to this on audio only, I want to just explain what's on sure, your screen. Sure. So uh, uh, this is uh, Burnell Trammell, okay? Uh, and he is African-American, uh, right? I mean, it looks yeah, like with a, I'd, say, I'd go ahead and I'd call him a dreadlocked uh, yeah, Rastafarian looking guy. Again. He's a Rastafarian looking guy. That's a fair statement. And he happens to be a Trump supporter. And uh, so, you know, nothing about this. It's, it's just, I mean, the, the silence is deafening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so, and I don't want to pop around too much from, from issue to issue, but here was another one where that, that we talked about right before we went on where 
Georgia Tech said, okay, we're going to, I woke up to a, a, to a headline that said, in San Francisco, if you have a gathering of 24 people, the odds that you would have a, a, someone COVID positive would be 34%. And where I live, right north, you know, very healthy and happy Marin County, they said the odds are 75% on this calculator. And I'm like, I, I know it's lying and I, and I couldn't figure out how, how they were lying and how they, they, they came up with that. Well, what I figured it was two things or discovered was two things. One is they assume that everybody who had COVID, nobody was in a hospital or self-isolating, you know, every person would be walking around. And then they said, well, we know there's some undercounting. So we'll multiply all these numbers times 10. So, and that was like under the hood. I mean, they, they talked about it on their thing, but on their, on their calculator, but not one article that I read explained that, oh yeah, we're getting all these numbers and multiplying it times 10. And then in my area, they also counted in the number of San Quentin prisoners on, on there as well. So, so really the number was probably about 4%. If you had a party with 25 people, the odds of somebody having COVID, again, assuming every single person with COVID walked around, but it was a calculator and it got played up hundreds of times and the media is doing their best to, to, ex, to exploit and expand the, the importance of this as, as much as they can. And it was a perfect headline for them. And that's what we're facing every day when we have a media where 90% of them get up in the morning and they say, how do I stand between Trump, Hitler and the United States? How can I stop this from happening? This is a crazy time we're living in. I mean, it's just really unbelievable. It, it truly is. So um, hydroxychloroquine, I mean, is this a legit treatment or is it the devil or, you know, how, how does anybody know what to believe? I will tell you one thing, though. I have a friend, the first one I knew that got COVID, and this was months ago, okay? So in, in COVID years, this is like right. dog years. It's a long time. And, um, and he just volunteered, and he's not a political guy at all. And this was before it became very political, it was a little bit political, because anything Trump endorses must be evil, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> um, it's just crazy. Uh, and, and, and he said, in, in a, a mastermind meeting, we were on Zoom, and he said, I don't want to be political or anything. Like, he started with that statement. But let me talk about this drug. But, but I, I just have to tell you that hydroxychloroquine saved my life. My, my lungs were being attacked. Uh, my body was attacking my own system. And as soon as they started me on that, it all reversed. Wow. wow. So, you know, that was his own personal testimony. And, and he is not a political guy, okay? I mean, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I, I know enough because I worked in the, the medical industry for a little bit to kind of say, all right, discount as much as possible every story like that, right? Because when you're, when you're talking thousands and what percentage is over this, the anecdotes kind of you never know. That's why they have double blind studies and doing things. I have never seen a drug rooted against before, though. And it was literally, you know, a day, two days after Trump, Trump said it. And Trump, you know, Trump, he was like, it's a miracle cure. I mean, so he was he, out he there. Was, if, if Trump were really smart, he'd use re re reverse psychology. I think about that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that sometimes. Just be He's like, saying, you know. This thing is bad. Don't take it. Then yeah, let's have little voting little. by mail. And all of a sudden, the Democrats would know that he's up to something. Yeah, no, literally. I mean, and we've seen it time after. I mean, you know, we, we kill a terrorist, a bad, bad, bad person. And the media is, you know, stroking the dead man's hair and talking about his poetry and, and, and what, a, what, a, what a good grandfather he was to his jihadi babies. Uh, it's, a, it's a nutty time. I mean, look, the, the bigger danger, though, is not, well, part of it's that, 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 you know, I talk to doctors and you think that they are smart enough to not be like so heavily politicized, but they get that way too. I mean, they're, yeah, they're just science as, is politicized. Well. It's, it's, look, who, what, what research department is going to get the grant, the money, uh, you know, are, are, are you going to be hated by all your, your coworkers? I mean, it, yeah. yeah. And, and if it was just the kind of crazy ones, you'd be saying, mm, and of course, the media, when, when those seven or nine doctors went there, a couple of them were nutty. And the one gal from who, who went to medical school in, in Africa, you know, you're like, okay, I'm not, you know, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm biased towards American doctors, but maybe that's just me. Um, but there's well, a yeah, lot of people that, saying that discrimination. 
I mean, <laughs> yes, it you is. went to medical it school is. in Africa, like, whoa, shouldn't you be more woke about that? And so I tell you, last, last Friday, not this Friday, the Friday before, I wrote up this long piece and I was talking about, uh, we have an action alert that we get out every day. And I was talking about the importance of, even if there are oddball voices out there, how important it is to, to allow every medical voice be heard, the, who's not, you know, and, and because it's like, you know, and I went through the history of Semmelweis who said, hey, maybe we can stop all these women dying in childbirth by washing our hands before we deliver them. And it was a radical, great thing. The guy died in an insane asylum because he was driven out of the, out of the medical industry because, they, because he couldn't handle being rejected after that for, for, and it wasn't until a decade after did, did other doctors take him up on that. And time after time, you know, germ theory was a crazy nutty thought. So I write up this long detailed piece on why we shouldn't do this. I hit send and immediately my tech guy says, oh, we just got banned from our, from our, our, our service provider to send out emails. <laughs> literally they because they're working with the who to prevent misinformation and harmful information they had a computer program look for links or words and because i had put a link to those doctors website which ironically had been taken down by squarespace because it was dangerous that so these people got killed from that and i got killed through the weekend at least and i got killed for putting a link to their dead website that's the kind of of that level of censorship bothers me a heck of a lot more than dumb doctors or even, even you know, I mean, they'll figure out this drug one way or another just because it's a big world. I, I but, mean, everybody, you know, the one thing that, um, like Voltaire said, that, that great Voltaire quote, um, something to the effect of, you know, I may disagree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell you something, everybody better be adopting that kind of posture. Because they're they're coming for you next. There's going to be some belief that they they don't like that you have, and uh, you know the pendulum always swings back and forth. But you know most of these people have no concept of history. Um, and I mean, imagine this. Imagine if it were you know 1965, okay, and the phone company was eavesdropping on every conversation everybody had. And uh, imagine if they didn't like what you said and they cut off your phone service. Now they can't do that because they're under common carrier laws. And they have to, as long as you're, as my understanding, listen, I'm not an expert. Okay, I've just talked to people a lot. <laughs> this you're right, you're right. So, <laughs> you know, if you know more, please correct me. But, you know, as long as you're paying your bill, you get phone service. Right. You're, you're entitled to the utility, right? Um, and, th and these big tech companies have to be regulated like utilities, or they have to be busted up under Sherman antitrust laws, or, and maybe these are ends, not ors, mm -hmm. or they have to make all their algorithms public so everybody can see exactly right. what they're doing. Right. Um, one or all three of those things have I think to there's a I think there's another one that's possible in there that, that the... You know, so a lot of that comes under the Communication Decency Act. Yeah. Why the Communication yeah, well, Decency what Act? What a wrongly named act, by the well, way. Well, but what it was, it was because like somebody put up child porn on 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 a on a website, and they'd take it down, and then they'd be like, "Well, we don't want to be classified as a publisher," meaning we're doing all this. That's actually how it got the the nose in the door was mm -hmm. was why that was through that act. You know, the other thing that's been radically abused though by these companies is is copyright law in America. Okay. I mean, look. Google copyright was designed so that if I write Google Harry Potter, has no respect for people's copyrights. Yeah. Well, but but if I write a book and okay, so so I write Harry Potter, you can't copy it. I I, ha I have that. But when you post something on Facebook, you have basically given them worldwide exclusive rights to that. Mm -hmm. Your photos and and your words, even if you take it down, they can still keep it if it's yeah. been shared on other yeah. places. Mm -hmm. And and that's fine. Except and and they're like, man, we have nothing to do with this. You can't sue us for that. Oh, but if you and I decided to make a competitor to Facebook and we decided to suck that information out and put that onto the other site, then they're suing you for copyright fraud. So they actually have the copyright to my stuff and and that's how they're that's how they're maintaining their 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 monopoly. I don't actually believe they need to be broken up, but if they made you every time you type something to say, okay, do I give this do I give this access to any website out there or just Facebook? they'd have competitors in, in a heartbeat because it's a third of the people did that. Because, you know, you go to some empty, empty 
competitor and there's your friends aren't there well, and you're like look at gab i mean right. gab is a competitor to facebook right, right. And, a, and a good one i think i mean i don't know much about them but uh, you can't uh, you know, they they sell memberships, okay? So you have to pay them a five bucks a month or some right. little tiny amount, right? But they can't process your payment. PayPal has banned them. Oh, the credit card companies have banned them. You've got to either pay in Bitcoin or check. What's <laughs> is the bank going to say, no, you're true. not allowed to send a check to this company? Look, is that I, what's coming? Two, two things. One is, is Parler, I think, every conservative who's on Twitter has a moral obligation to get a parlor account um, because they're basically gab, but they they got, problem is when you start a free speech platform, you really do start off with the Nazis and the, and the, and the jihadis and bad, bad people. And gab had a little bit of that going on in there. You know, it's like everybody who was kicked off of these other things. Parlor is actually getting some 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 traction and it's, it's getting millions of accounts on there. Mm-hmm. Look, conservatives are going to have to build up their entire, their entire internet. I mean, you're, it's, it's ISPs, it's ESPs, it's payment processors. This is a huge one because that comes down to just a handful of highly regulated companies. Um, um, it's, it's content distribution networks. People are getting zapped left, right, and center. And yeah, there's going to, if this increases this, this, this censorship, and, and I, don't, I don't think we're getting close to a peak yet on it. I think it's getting worse. I, I, think, it's, I think they still have a lot of room to run. The conservatives are going to need to figure out ways to build every single piece of that internet backbone up. Yeah, well, you know, I'm looking in my app store and I'm going to get Parler. Uh, but um, let me tell you something. Who controls the app store? Apple. <laughs> and they're pretty liberal over there. <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, they'll, they'll uh, this down. you know, they'll they'll find a way. They'll find an ex- They'll make some excuse. You know, it's like we joke about it in my office, but then we don't joke about it because we get I mean, I had three and a half million people following me on, on Facebook. Pulled one day, I can't even get a meeting or, or a conversation with them. Um, um, and it was loosely like, they think, they said you did X, Y, and Z. It was like, you know, and... and uh, this, these right. companies do not deserve legal immunity. You should be able to sue them. And uh, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they, the, the, the tech platforms are abusing so much power It is just crazy. These companies have way too much money. They're way too big. And I'm a capitalist, at least I think so. But this is out of control. And this is they also have a huge amount of power, unfortunately, in in politics. It's like, look, the Dems right now, they want them to regulate more. (laughs) The Republicans, they want less regulation, but they're afraid to break things up because that's part of their, well, we shouldn't punish successful people. And Google has everybody's personal emails. Yep. Look, if you give me the, the personal emails to everybody in Washington, D.C., just Gmail, I could probably get you elected president of the United States. You know, it's interesting. Facebook is literally censoring inside of Facebook Messenger. This has happened to me several times. Dude, type in www.lacourtnews.com, which, which I founded. It'll tell you that's a violation if you send that to a friend. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like, I mean it's in crazy. Messenger... I can see, you know, I can, I can sort of rationalize, okay, a post, that's yeah. one thing, but a message, a private message? Yeah, my, my entire domain has been blacklisted, and, and so literally you couldn't, if I had an account, you couldn't even send it to me. This is just, but, this is just, but they killed the personal accounts and all that stuff. Yeah, so it's, um, look, I think we raised a generation of kids who were told that the worst thing to be in the world was a bully. And when I was, I don't know how old you are, I'm 55. When I was well, going through- bullies pretty bad. I hate bullies. But the tech, the irony is the tech companies are the bullies. Well, but, but every single, but when I grew up, it was all don't do drugs, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. When I took my kid to junior high, it was, they had a bullying thing every week, every two weeks. Well, what's the, what's the opposite of being a bully as a victim? And then you got to shut those bullies up. And, and I'm, I'm a believer that it kind of, that whole concept of you can't say that you shut up which of course is now expanded into anybody who doesn't think exactly in lockstep with, with how they are. But it kind of came out of that bully atmosphere 15 years ago, I, I, I think. It's crazy. It is really crazy. Well, uh, leave us with an action step. Or a I, will leave, I will leave you with an action step. I will go back to, to this. So look, I, 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 where's the share button there? I founded this Basically, it's, it's for people who are just tired of complaining about the, uh, the left-wing media and, 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 and want to get into it. The entire point of the website is to get you into the email. 
because except when my ESP is, is, is banning me and I can get another ESP, uh, that, that this is the only way that I can communicate with people without some liberal censor getting in between me and them. And our, our agenda is to expose the ones who are still saying that they're neutral and, and saying that they're honest, to protect the people who are getting screwed over by, by, uh, you know, by that type of stuff and, and eventually replace that with something that's, that's fair. And, and part of that is, is the, the big cable things in the world, but a big part of that is we're going to have to build up piece by piece the internet with, with free speech in mind. It's amazing. The thing that was invented uh, with free speech, <laughs> yeah, and it's just so controlled because yeah. it's, there are too few companies controlling it. That's the problem. 100%. Uh, what's your website? Uh, it's www.mediaactionnetwork.com. Mediaactionnetwork.com. Ken, thanks yep. for joining us. Terrific. Thank you for having me. It was a pun. Right. It was fun.